Let's shake hands. I don't follow foreign habits. It is quite likely that Bruce would have returned to San Francisco anyway, as he needed to do so by the time he was 18 to confirm his American citizenship. But the fact that things were hotting up in his constant confrontations with rival street gangs and that his mother had to stand guarantor for him to avoid police prosecution probably hastened his departure. Bruce Lee took the next steamer to the city of his birth. On the way, he made a little extra money giving dance lessons. From San Francisco, he moved quickly to Seattle. Chinese restaurant called Ruby Chow's provided him with accommodation in return for work. He served in the restaurant and lived in the attic. Once established, a dramatic change occurred. He enrolled in high school and the school dropout became a diligent student. He still practiced Kung Fu passionately, but no longer on other people. Graduating from high school, he went to university to study philosophy. His art teacher still treasures two of the drawings he did at the time. Bruce was a good student. Uh, his work with me was always very ambitious. And uh, I've no doubt that he was the same in all his classes. For the ambitious Bruce Lee, it was not enough to be a good martial artist. He had to be the best. He taught Kung Fu to a group of fellow students, one of whom was a 19-year-old girl called Linda Emery. They were married and moved into this small but comfortable house. The former bully and man about town became the ideal husband and father to Brandon and later Shannon. Kung Fu demonstration at Long Beach in 1964 turned out to be one of the most important events in Bruce Lee's life. It was seen by an acquaintance of a television producer who was looking for someone to play Charlie Chan's number one son in a proposed series. A screen now, test of Bruce was arranged. Right here and tell us your name, your age, and where you were born. My last name is Lee, Bruce Lee. I was born in San Francisco in 1940. I'm 24 right now. And you work in uh, motion pictures in Hong Kong? Yes, uh, since I was around six years old. And when did you leave Hong Kong? 1959, when I was 18. I see. Now look over to me, Bruce, as we talk. Uh, I understand you just had a baby boy? Yeah. And uh, you lost a little sleep over it, have you? Uh, three nights. <laughs> and tell the crew what time uh, they shoot the pictures in Hong Kong. Well, it's mostly uh, in the morning because it's kind of noisy in Hong Kong, you know, around three million people there, and so... Every time when you have a picture, it's mostly, say, around 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning. That's it. Now look directly into the camera, Bruce. Directly at it. And now give me a three-quarter this way. And hold it. And give me a profile that way, all the way. Good. Hold it. Now come back to a profile on the other side. And hold that. Give me a three-quarter on that side. And then give me right into the camera again. All right, now the camera will pull back. And uh, Bruce, first show me the movements in the classical Chinese theater. Classical Chinese well, theater? Well, you know what we talked about in the opera, how they walk and how they start to move. Well, in the uh, Chinese opera, they have the warrior and then the scholar. The way the, war the warrior walk will be something like this. Walking this way, straight, come out, bend, straight, and then walk out again. An ordinary scholar would be just like a female, a weakling, 90 pounds in child hours. <laughs> You'll be just walking, you know, like a girl, real, shoulder up and everything. So by the way they walk, you can immediately tell who they are. Right, uh, what character they represent. Now, uh, show us some Kung Fu movements. Well, it is hard to show it alone, but uh, I will try to do my best. All right, maybe one of the fellas will walk in. Walk yeah, it would be... Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Okay. Although 
accidents do happen, but you know. <laughs> there are various kinds of strikes. It depends on where you hit and what weapon you will be using. To the eyes, you would use fingers. Don't worry. <laughs> I will. To the eyes, or straight at the face, from the waist, everything on. Oh, just a minute. Uh, let's move this gentleman around this way so you're doing it more in the camera. No, okay, okay, well. And then there is an arm strike using the waist again into a back fit. And then, of course, Kung Fu is very sneaky. You know, the, Chi the Chinese, they always hit low. From high, go back to the groin. <laughs> now turn around the other way, would you, Bruce? Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, Would you want him? Yes. Oh, These are just natural here. reactions. That's right, right. right. That right. is natural right. reactions. Right into the camera. Cheat into the camera a little bit. Show this again. All right. Right. There is the finger jab. There is the punch. There is the back fist. And then low. Of course, then they use leg. Straight at the groin, all come up. Or, if I can back up a little bit, they start back from here and then come back. <laughs> all right. It's kind of work. <laughs> For various reasons, the series was never produced, but it did lead to the role of Cato in the series The Green Hornet. While the show itself was not exactly an overwhelming success, it lasted 30 half-hour episodes, Bruce received favorable reviews and was probably more popular than the star. He had a small part in Marlowe with James Garner. And then came Longstreet. I'll be kicking you. You ready? Ready. One, a two, a three. Hi, hey, hi! Hey. You all right? That guy's fantastic. Now, uh, what is this, uh, what is this thing you do? In Cantonese, Jeet Kun Do, the way of the intercepting fist. Intercepting fist, huh? Or foot. Come on, touch me. Any way you can. You see? To reach me, you must move to me. Your attack offers me an opportunity to intercept you. In this case, I'm using my longest weapon, my sidekick, against the nearest target, your kneecap. This can be compared to your left jab in boxing, except it's much more damaging. I see. Well, speaking of a left jab... Oh! This time, I intercept your emotional tenseness. By now, Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do classes were so famous he could charge $275 an hour. And even then, he could pick and choose his students. Students like Karim Abdul-Jabbar, Steve McQueen, and James Coburn. However, Bruce Lee's overriding ambition was Hollywood. But Hollywood was not responding. The movie roles were not forthcoming and it was a bitter disappointment when he was passed up for the lead in the TV series Kung Fu. He returned, once again, to Hong Kong. Bruce Lee was certified dead on arrival at Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Hong Kong was stunned. And as the word spread, people read with shock and disbelief. The next day, thousands of people jammed the streets around the Kowloon funeral parlor. Several hundred extra police were detailed to try to control the crowd. No one could believe that someone like Bruce Lee, so young, so fit, could just die. <laughs> 